So I don't know if this is a plus or a minus yet, but this is how my brew day uh, is going to happen today in my kitchen uh, because uh, unless someone borrow my uh, turkey burner for um, for the uh, Thanksgiving and I'm brewing a uh, rye IPA today and I just want to go refill my propane tank, got back and realized I do not have uh, my turkey burner. So. And I'm not gonna, they're not home, so I can't drive and go grab it. This is my yeast starter. Um, I'm gonna use WL, uh, White Labs uh, 001, the uh, California ale for this. Um, let me grab. So for, so for um, the recipe is going to be, um, I kind of mix it up because I wanted to try something different. Um, I went with eight pounds of pale malt. Um, and two pounds of marisotter, a pound of uh, rye, and eight ounces of uh, Crystal 40. Give me an SRM of about eight, uh, OG of about 1060. And um, I might switch it up. I mean, I might switch it up as far as um, the hops go. If I could focus there a little bit. No, I guess not. Um, with two ounces of Two ounces of Simcoe, um, two ounces of Simcoe, and uh, at 60 minutes, Falconer's Flight at um, 20 minutes, and Dry Hop uh, with an ounce of Amarillo uh, for four days. Um, I'm not exactly, uh, now when I dry hop, I usually do the, um, I usually do, um, I, uh, Throw the yeast in there, and I'll, I'll let it go for about three or four days. Then I'll put the uh, then I'll put dry hops in, and um, let that go for four days, um, and then um, go ahead and uh, rack to a secondary. Um, so hopefully it turns out to where I wanted to. I've never brewed a, a rye before; it's my first time with with rye. So um, hopefully. Uh, let me go ahead and just check my temperature here. Oh, a little too close here. I guess it's it's cold outside, so so brewing uh, indoors might actually be a good thing. It's supposed to be at 166 for my strike water. Uh, right now I'm at 148 climbing pretty quick that's a good thing about I guess having it um, I have this is a five burner stove so I have one in each corner there and I have a center burner there so it's coming up pretty quick and I got all going pretty high kind of get the temperature going up a little bit so um, so I'll see that mashing all right I went ahead and I uh, collected my first runnings uh, about a gallon I only got about a gallon and a half of it I got the uh, fan going, a bunch of the windows open there, so hopefully I can, uh, it's really hot in here right now, so hopefully uh, that helps. Uh, I know I'm going to have to close them uh, probably towards uh, the end of the boil. Um, and I'm thinking about just doing a no chill for this, since I just started the yeast starter today. Um, so I'll probably give that about uh, 18 hours. Or 20 hours or so to um, to get going. So then I'll add that to uh, the wart tomorrow. And um, getting my hops ready. I uh, I have as you can see the Amarillo, the Falconer's Flight, and then the uh, two ounces of Simcoe. Which uh, so I'm gonna do this 60 minutes. Flavor with the Falconer's Flight and dry hot with the Amarillo. So, um, I never had the Falconer's Flight. Uh, I never. I don't think I've, I don't even think I've had a commercial brew with a Falconer's Flight. So what I'm gonna, so that's what I'm, this is what I'm going to use for my flavoring. So um, that way I can get a, get the profile of it. And Amarillo, like everyone knows, has great great aroma. Simcoe is a great bittering hop. Um, and then it's 
pretty high in the uh, alpha acids as well. That's why I'm using it for my for my bittering because I want this to be a, a rye hot bomb. Um, so that's all I got. I'll check back in with you at 60 minutes. Oh yeah. Some cold holiness there. Oh, it smells great. All right, I got my uh, rolling boil going here. Just a small little bit of uh, the protein, uh, the freaking hot break there, but I'm gonna get going. 60 minute, two ounce um, Simcoe. There you go. Let's get that good mix -o. Oh yeah. drawback of what I'll probably do in the house is uh, I have to be extra cautious that I don't freaking have a boil over. Now, if it happens outside, you know, it happens outside, you just take the hose and you wash the, the old patio off. It happens in here, you got a lot of freaking cleaning to do. Not to mention you get your ass chewed by the old wife. Alright. I'm going to do 35 minutes and then add the Falconer's Flight. Hey, this Redskins game is pretty damn good. Just went to overtime. Old rock of RG3 got a little jacked up. Alright. 25 minutes left here. I'm gonna go ahead and go with uh, my Falconer's flight. I'm gonna freaking cut this. Damn it. Alright. By the way, when you got uh, man, the good thing about also having in your house is you can smell the brew a lot better than they're just uh, having it outside. You smell just kind of go away. All right, this is the Falconer's Flight. Some citrus, piney stuff. That's the way it smells. Tell you what though, that freaking Simcoe smells great. All right. 25 minutes left to go. And then uh, we're gonna flame out and uh, put in the primary. And the last thing about um, brewing indoors or inside is you're able to clean up. Seems, I think clean up's a lot faster. As you can see, it took me well, done really fast and I didn't freeze my ass off. Uh, go outside washing all the stuff out. Not only, not only is it cold outside, but um, you know the water that comes out of your freaking the water that comes out of your freaking uh, hose is <laughs> freezing cold as well. So that's a plus. So, so that's it for my homebrew Wednesday. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, haven't really been uh, you know updating videos because you know just really busy lately. Um, hopefully I'll be able to um, get something done, a lot more done the beginning of, uh, of next year. And, um, you know, I might brew, like I said before, even though I said I was going to brew my Black IPA, um, uh, I went to something different because I just, you know, I thought I was, I was on my little hop uh, kick there and I was just, uh, I didn't really want to brew anything else. But um, I decided, you know, in order to, to get more familiar with beer and beer styles, I have to brew different types of beers, so that's why I went with the Belgian Double. Um, I'm, you know, going back to my um, to the Black IPA, but it might not necessarily uh, be the next one uh, since I just brewed this hoppy guy here. Um, so, you know, um, I have a glass carboy now that I got off of uh, off a friend of mine. So uh, I might do a, a sour, um, but um, we'll see how that goes. Um, since I can, since I brew pretty much everything else in the plastic containers, and depending on how Christmas comes along, I might get another one. Um, uh, so I'm, you know. When I clear up, when I clean up the carboy he gave me, he's had it sitting there for about six months, and he racked something out, and then uh, he left it there, so it's cruddy like a, like no one's business. But 
Uh, I'll probably go to my homebrew shop tomorrow or, or sometime soon and get one of those carboy cleaners. Um, I know B. Mari came out with a video on how to make one, but I just don't have... First, I don't have a glue gun, and then coming out and making a glue gun, um, going out and, I'm sorry, getting a glue gun and stuff like that um, will probably cost more than just to go into my homebrew shop and getting it since he only sells his for 12 bucks. So, um, and they're really good ones, you know, there's little reviews on it and they've gotten good reviews. So for 12 bucks and then I get, oh, actually, and then I, because I purchased five times or six times within one year, um, he gave me, um, I have, it's 15%, but he always gives me military discount. So it's 20% for the full year. So I get 20% off from now on for the early, until next December. So and that's cool. Every time I go in, I get 20% off instead of the 15. And um, so uh, this brew right here, when I went in there yesterday, cost me, um, it was a le uh, 12 pounds of grains, um, 4 ounces of, of, of hops, and I had my own um, yeast. Um, cost me $23. $23 and like 27 cents, you know, so. That's cool that I get that discount there. So hopefully, it's only 